Welcome to Concierge Q Conversations with Chantal Westerman. Hello, I'm Chantal Westerman, and welcome to Concierge Q, the online travel magazine where you'll find the best travel information and all you want to know about wherever you're going. doesn't make any difference where. And one of the ways we do that is right here with something we call Concierge Q Conversations. Concierge Q Conversations are intimate travel portraits with very interesting people from all around the world, and we like to think of them as our local travel experts in the know. Please remember that you can always follow along with us at conciergeq.com. Today, we're talking to a very, very special girl and talk about On Her Way Up. Based in New York City, Lilia Broussard is a fun and thought-provoking singer-songwriter on the brink of major stardom, an eloquent songstress with a unique point of view. Her new infectious tune, Satellite, is about a sad robot in love, a song I've been listening to all morning, by the way, and I love it. She's gaining mass attention from both fans and music industry critics alike. Lilia, through her signature style, has now captured the eyes of music lovers everywhere with the help of Rolling Stone magazine's Choose the Cover contest. Now she's a hot finalist for the most iconic magazine cover in the music business, we all know that, as well as being signed to a coveted Atlantic Records contract. She's battling right now Canadian boogie rockers The Sheepdogs in a fierce showdown where over half a million votes have been cast online, and that's just so far. Coming up, the two contenders will play an epic battle of the bands at the Bonnaroo Festival in Manchester, Tennessee. Now, before I introduce you to Lilia, I want to give you just a little taste of her music. So listen for just a few minutes here, a few seconds, to Satellite. I slip and sway out of me Passing down I think I may be Losing my mind well, I ride my bike up the hill To an abandoned house On the outskirts of Los Angeles Where no one can see me Nobody really knows me at all Would you be my With that said, I'd like to say hello to Lilia. Hello. How are you, my sweet girl? I am good. How are you? I'm very, very well here in Sun Valley, Idaho. I think so many people relate to you and your kind of music because, at least from my perspective, it's got a real feel of telling the truth to it, if you understand what I mean. When we have pain, for example, in our lives, we always think we're so alone but your music confirms that we're not. Is that part of your agenda in music? That is absolutely part of uh, what I'm all about. When you go through pain in any way, if, if it's through a relationship or everybody you know, feels pain and it's different for everyone, but it's also the same for everyone. So my job is to articulate those feelings and and hopefully people hear it and are moved and say oh my goodness you've been able to articulate what i haven't been able to say are you hard on yourself when you write a tune for example do you write something and then wake up the next morning and listen to it and say oh how could i have written that i hate that that doesn't sound real that happens a lot sometimes you know i'm lucky enough to you know satellite was a song i wrote in like an hour and I was like, oh, it's done. And then other other songs that take months and some songs that a lot of songs that never get finished because they're like, this is crap. This is terrible. <laughs> so that happens a lot. It's, um, it is not easy most of the time. It's amazing to me. It's always been amazing to me how music can carry us through really difficult times in our lives without probing you too much, but you are a songwriter who writes about pain and part of part of your appeal is you open your heart with your songs to your fans and your listeners. What's a time in your life that you really struggled through and music got you through it? This record, Masquerade, that is out now, for me, it's pretty much, my, my life was just falling apart when I wrote the record. I was in a relationship that was really terrible and I was ending that relationship and 
I didn't know where I wanted to be with my life. I, I was having um, a rough time with my career, with the music industry. I was really frustrated with that, but also a really great time because it was, um, I, I don't know if I've ever been so, been able to be so creative through hardship and all, all, all the things that I was going through at the time. It's a lot about venting too, isn't it? I mean, when you say it out loud. It's a therapy in a way, you know, it's like, I don't know where I would be if I wasn't able to express myself in, in that way. You know, a lot of artists just sing and kudos to them. I mean, I, lo- I love the voices that we have in the world who, who sing for us and entertain us. But how does it inform your music, your life, that you're playing the guitar, you're creating with that instrument and singing? I picked up the guitar when I was a young teenager, 12 or 13, and um, it felt like a really natural thing. And that's always been how I've written songs. I have started writing songs and it was just like, this feels like the right thing for me. And over the years, you know, I've been playing guitar now for many years. And so it's it's just a comfortable thing. Sometimes during the show where maybe I'll just sing for a song, which can be a fun thing too. playing guitar. It's, it's almost just like a part of me. It's not like a, I don't know, just feels like the right thing. Do you ever have diva moments? I was just reading. I was just reading online. I think I can get away with this, actually, because I love I love uh, Katy Perry. But I was just reading online about her huge demands at concerts and, you know, backstage. So honestly, not, it's just you and me here. I won't tell anybody else. <laughs> I don't think so. I mean, I would uh, say that I'm, I, I try to be a pretty humble and easygoing person. I think there are times for all of us when we get a little frustrated with life and we're like, where's my coffee, damn it? You know, but <laughs> I try not to be that because that's not the person I want to be. <laughs> and this is an entirely different question, really. The music industry is a very, very tough industry. Do you know that you have to be tough on some levels? That is absolutely true. Um, Things happen. And I was just talking about this last night with a friend of mine. And, you know, things happen and your expectations are adjusted. And, you know, you you become a little bit jaded, you know, with all the things that happen because there's a lot of everybody's heard the stories about the music industry. But there's a lot of great people as well. And so now all the people that were saying, no, 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 we're not interested. No, thanks. They're all kind of knocking at my door now, which is, which is amazing. And you have to say, oh, this is great. This is fantastic. And you have to just keep a level head and yeah. (laughs) How old are you? I will be 22 on Tuesday. I'm hoping that you remember that at 22, here you are, about to be on the cover of Rolling Stone. And I say that because I think you're so talented and phenomenal, and I think you will win this. And by the way, we will talk later about how people can vote for you. But are you making a note to yourself or writing a journal to remember this? Because this is an incredible ride. I mean, think about it. The cover of Rolling Stone. It sure is. It's, um, it, I'm just enjoying every moment, not taking anything for granted. It's, I mean, I think it's so important to enjoy the ride wherever you are at, even if it's not as wonderful and, and exciting as this is, even just wherever you are at the time, I think it's important to, to be present in that moment. And so I am, uh, I am, Definitely doing that. One of the things that I believe that the folks at uh, Rolling Stone find so appealing in you is that you have an ease, a comfort zone, and a presence on stage that you rarely see in someone as young. Where did that come from? I think it just came from doing it. <laughs> you know, I've been playing shows since I was fourteen, like a lot of shows since I since I was very young, and I've toured. Um, for the past, you know, year or two years, I've been on tour. I haven't. I, I was living in LA, and I, I gave up my apartment because I was on tour for so many months of the year. It just didn't make sense for me to be paying rent. So I, I've played a lot of shows, and I've done it a lot. And that's the only way to get comfortable, you know, and to have that kind of thing is to do it a lot. Have you ever played at the Bitter End in New York? I sure have. Mm-hmm. That's a great place to start. I yes, I have. That was the 
the first place I played in New York and the owner, Kenny, was um, very sweet and 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 was very supportive and it was a, a great place to to start out for me for sure lovely it's it's an amazing place the bitter end it's so historic isn't it when you think of the other people who've stood on that stage it is absolutely absolutely uh, let's get into travel just a little bit because we are an online travel site and uh one of the first questions i have for you is louisiana i mean that's where you really come from and louisiana and is now claiming you on so many levels but how did louisiana the music of louisiana the feel of louisiana which is just one of the most special places in the world inform your music i feel like being from Louisiana and growing up in the house that I did where music was so, um, you know, it was playing all the time in our house and we were going to see live music all the time, which is something that Louisiana, you know, there's incredible music festivals like in the, you know, we, we're, I'm from Lafayette, Louisiana. And so there's this festival called, uh, Festival International and it's, um, music from all over the world and there's, live music in the streets on Friday night, you know, it's mm -hmm. just, mm -hmm. it's, um, at, uh, downtown alive. And so we would go and do these things. I went with my mom and I would go and see all this live music and there would be music in the house and I was singing all the time. So it was just like ingrained in me and, and the culture there is so cool. We would go and see Zydeco and dance and I don't know how that could not have an in the impact on someone. So it's an amazing place and I'm really proud to be from Louisiana and um, feel really lucky that I, I got to have that upbringing, you know. For people who might not know, just talk a few minutes about exactly what Zydeco is. I haven't heard it mentioned in a long time. Well, it's a, uh, it's like a, it's Cajun music. <laughs> mm, it sure is. It sure is. There's the, they have a washboard and it's kind of like a, it's not country, but it's kind of like a swing, like it's fun and people dance, but it's like country, like Louisiana music. <laughs> well, there you go. You did a good job describing it. It's, it's such, for me, Zydeco is such great Louisiana street music. It is. Yeah. Having a blast is, is that, you know? <laughs> that's, a, that's a perfect it's description fun. right there. Yeah. So on your questionnaire when we ask you what is the most creative spiritual or emotional place in your city and of course you talked about new york you said at night when it first starts to snow talk to yeah. me about that visual about new york for people who might not have ever been to new york and you want to draw them in i don't know it's always such a cool moment if you're kind of walking home from a bar or from anywhere it's a it's a it's a rare kind of like quiet moment in New York. What's your favorite outdoor activity in New York? Um, there are a lot of things. I there's a, a summer concert series in Prospect Park in Brooklyn that is um, really really fun, and you can go make a picnic and it's free. That is a really really fun thing. They have you know you can buy a beer and just kind of put out a blanket and hang out all day and. Um, I'm not sure who I saw. I saw like Jay-Z or The Roots or something last year. And then they have a, a similar thing in um, a summer concert series in Central Park as well, which is fun. And then there's these, um, they show these movies outside at the Brooklyn Bridge. And that's like at dusk because the sun's going down. And that's a really cool thing as well. I, I love those um, kind of outdoor like picnic -y things. It's just really fun to me. When you have some free time, let's say you're in studio in New York and you get off a couple hours earlier than you anticipated, you want to go have a drink. Where do you go? What do you order? Well, the place that I find myself the most in New York is, um, cause I'm always there is Rockwood Music Hall. And, um, it's a venue it's a music venue, but it's most of the time it's uh, free. I play I play there a lot, and uh, a lot of my friends are always playing there, so I go. I love to go there and kind of hang out. And um, I mean, my drink of choice is, is a Jameson on the rocks or a glass of wine. Crucial question for eating in New York. And remember, people who are listening to this broadcast may never have been to New York, so we're drawing them in. All right. Where do you like to go for breakfast? For breakfast? Yeah. A good 
breakfast? I kind of split my time between LA and New York. But when I'm in LA, I, I have so many breakfast places that I love. And my absolute favorite breakfast in LA is at this place called Little Dom's. And it's in Los Feliz. And it is so good. Oh, God. I just can't even. It's so good. They have like these like potatoes that are like lemony, like garlic potatoes. Mm. And they're like crispy. And then they have um, just delicious eggs. And um, the coffee's great. Like it's, it's amazing. What are you going to do for the rest of your day today? I am going to uh, shoot some videos with some friends of mine. They direct my music videos and they're dear friends and really funny people. And we're going to shoot some some funny videos to kind of like get people to vote for me. (laughs) Just videos with me. Hold. There's a puppy like parade. And so I'm just going to go hold some puppies and. Maybe that'll convince people to, that they should vote for me to be on the cover of Rolling Stone. So how can people who are listening to this broadcast, and there are many who are, uh, vote for you? Well, it is so easy. All you have to do is go to um, rollingstone.com. Uh, and it should be on the front page there, but the direct link is rollingstone.com slash choose the cover. And you'll come up. And there'll be my face and the sheepdogs. And you just click vote here on me. Or if you like the sheepdogs, you can vote for them. Um, But, uh, yeah, it's just one click and that's it. And you can like it on Facebook and kind of share it with your friends if you want. But, um, yeah, it's very, very easy. Your face with the gorgeous makeup, which I love. Thank you. It's, It's so great. It's so great. Just that blue and those little black dots on your face. It took me by surprise and I thought, how pretty is that? Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, 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 exactly. Just so you know, you got my vote, sweet girl. Thank you. And thank you for your time. I I, I know your life is, is hectic and very, very busy, especially when you're zooming to the top as you are. I want to talk to you when you win. Oh, thank you for sure. Will you come back and talk to me when you win? Absolutely. Brilliant. All right. Thank you so much for your time. I love talking to you. And please remember, you can learn even more about Leela Broussard and her wonderful insider travel tips for New York City. And of course, you can vote for her at rollingstone.com. And if you want more information about her, check out her website. It's so cool. It's www.leelabroussard, that's B-R-O-U-S-S-A-R-D.com. Thanks for joining us for Concierge Q Conversations, and we'll talk to you next time.